Hey guys, uh, today we've got a little bit of notes for science uh, just to walk you through using the different formulas that we have. So we're talking all about energy and today we're going to use the formulas for kinetic energy and potential energy. So kinetic energy is, uh, the formula is one half times mass times velocity squared. One half mv squared. So the mass you're usually going to see measured in kilograms. Velocity is going to be meters per second. And the unit that we use to measure kinetic energy and potential energy is joules. J-O-U-L-E-S. Joules. Uh, and the unit or the abbreviation for that is just a capital J. Okay. Um, so this equation is pretty easy to work with. Uh, you just plug in the information that you know. Uh, so let's say, for example, we know that the mass of an object is 20 kilograms and it is moving at, I don't know, 30 meters per second. We would just calculate kinetic energy. We take these values and plug them in. So Ke is equal, sorry, Ke is equal to one half times mass, which in this example is 20, times the velocity 30 squared. Now, remember your order of operations rules from math class. The squared is only attached to the velocity, so that is the only thing that is going to be squared. So in our example, it would be 30. So when we type that into our calculator, uh, we would say times 30 squared. So you see 0.5, 1 half times the mass 20 times 30 squared. And our answer is going to be 9,000 And don't forget your units, they are measured in joules. Okay, um, that is what you need to do to calculate kinetic energy, which is what you're going to be doing on the first page of the worksheet. The second page of the worksheet is asking you to talk, work with the potential energy uh, equation, which is mass times gravity times height. Okay. Now, mass is again measured in kilograms. Height is going to be measured in meters. And again, your unit for potential energy is joules, which is abbreviated with a capital J. Now, gravity, what do we do with this? This is a constant, and on Earth, the gravitational constant is 9.8. I always like to go with 9.81, because that's a little more precise. Anyways, um, so that's the gravitational constant on Earth. That is the force of gravity that is, a, where, um, that is acting on you no matter where you are on the planet. If you were on a different planet, for example, or if you were on the moon, this value would change based on the force of gravity on whatever celestial body you happen to be on. Okay, um, So to calculate, let's have an example. So let's say we've got an object that is uh, 10 meters off the ground and it is also going to be, let's say, uh, I don't know, 20 kilograms. We're going to plug that information into our equation. We're trying to find the potential energy, so that stays PE. That's our variable. Uh, mass is 20. Our gravity is that constant, 9.81. And our height is 10 meters. Mass times gravity times height. So our potential energy is equal to... 20 times 9.81 times 10, which is 1,962 joules. Now, some of the questions are going to be asking you to solve for either mass 
or height, and they're giving you potential energy. So let's do an example of one of those. So let's say uh, I am told that the um, potential energy of an object is, let's say, 10,000 joules. Okay. And let's say that its height is, uh, I don't know, 30 meters. So what are we trying to solve for? The question would ask then, what is the mass of this object? So mass, we don't know. So that is going to be our variable. So let's plug what we do know into our potential energy equation. So equation, potential energy, we know that is 10,000 is equal to the mass, we don't know that, so we're going to use a variable m, times gravity, 9.81, times height, which we said was 30 meters. Now, we can't just solve this in one step. This is going to be a two-step equation. So you have your 10,000, because nothing happens on the left side of the equation yet, is equal to mass times 9.81 times 30. So we're going to use order of operations, and we're going to do that multiplication. So 9.81 times 30 gives us 294.3. and you still have the variable m there because we haven't solved for that yet. Now, using, in order to, using our rules for solving equations, we are going to uh, try to get m by itself, and right now it's being multiplied by 294.3. So in order to undo that, we need to divide by 294.3. So 10,000 divided by 294.3, we are going to get 33.9789333. So I'm going to round that off, and my general rule is round it to the hundredths place. So 0.978, so that would round to 0.98. And that equals our mass. But uh, what is the one thing that I do need to remember to add in there? Need to add my units. And our units for mass are in kilograms. Okay? So that would be an example for calculating the mass. If you knew something, let's say, um, just using this same example, let's say we didn't know the height. The way you would set up that equation would be we still have potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. So if you're trying to solve for height, so let's pretend that one doesn't exist. So we've got potential energy would be 10,000 is equal to the mass, which we just calculated here, 33.98 times gravity, which is 9.81 times our height, which is what we would try to calculate. Okay, so that is how you can manipulate the potential energy equation uh, in order to solve for either gravity or uh, for mass or for height. Um, in theory, you could also use it to calculate gravity. If you knew the mass of an object and the height of an object, uh, you would be able to calculate the gravity. Um, however, I'm pretty sure all of the problems that we're going to be dealing with are uh, measured on Earth. So therefore, the gravity is always going to be this 9.81 figure. Okay. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and email me. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great day. Take care.